Hello everyone, welcome back to the Den Fan channel. And today we're talking about Sonic Prime. I'm sure it's no secret that 2022 has been the year for Sonic with the Sonic 2 movie coming out, the live action thing, and also Sonic Frontiers, their new game, which is it's pretty interesting. I mean, I'm playing it on my gaming channel. If you haven't been keeping up with that, I give most of my thoughts there as I'm playing it. But now we also have the Sonic cartoon, the newest Sonic cartoon. And it seems like every time they do a Sonic cartoon, there's somewhat of a reboot of, uh, you know, the Sonic world <laughs> as we know it at least. This one seems to be taking most of its inspiration from the Sonic comics rather than uh, rebooting it from the ground up. Now, when I first heard about Sonic Prime, I had kind of mixed feelings about it. You know, I, in a way, I actually really like that there's a new Sonic cartoon coming out to, you know, reintroduce younger kids to the Sonic franchise as well as uh, keep it alive. Frankly, there's definitely been a lot of Sonic cartoons out there. Some better than others. Uh, the first thing that you, I heard about Sonic Prime is that it's going to be kind of diving into the Sonic verse, and it seems like everything these days are are playing around with the idea of multiverses. And I wasn't really super into it, just because it seems like it's everywhere these days. These multiverses. Uh, a lot of people were interested in the idea of Sonic meeting other versions of Sonic since the universe itself, since the, the whole world, is, like I said before, is kind of like rebooted with every Sonic cartoon and for the most part even the games aren't even consistent sometimes. But it doesn't seem like they went in that direction as more information came out, you know, as more details came out. There's no alt versions of Sonic and it's not uh, calling back to any of the previous Sonics. It's not like uh, the Spider-Verse. I kind of went into this with fairly maybe low expectations thinking, oh, well, this is just going to be one of those episode-by-episode episode things where each episode he goes to a different universe and he, like, solves whatever problem that universe has and then moves on to the next one and the next one. And maybe there's an overarching plot where he finally finds his way back to his universe and maybe has greater appreciation for what he has. And I wasn't a huge fan of the idea that it's going to be a, another Sonic cartoon in the 3D style rather than 2D style. It's going to be a long time if we ever get to see a 2D Sonic cartoons again. I mean, yeah, I guess you got the Sonic Mania shorts, if those count. <laughs> those were fun. So now that I've finally watched the cartoon, my takeaway is that it's actually good. It's actually like really solid for a Sonic cartoon. It's not exactly what I was expecting with it being episode by episode being a new universe. Rather instead, every episode kind of ends on a, a cliffhanger and we stick around for different universes for longer than I thought that we would. Uh, especially the universe in which Eggman has taken over because they have very advanced technology in that universe and he actually uses that technology to chase after Sonic through the other universes, which is very exciting, I gotta say. In that cyberpunk universe where Eggman has taken over that Sonic goes to, there's also an alt version of Amy where she has become a cyborg and she is a threat to Sonic and friends in that form. That's super cool. Uh, it's also cool just because it's, uh, I think at least, it's supposed to be a callback to Sad I Am Sonic where they had a cyborg character in that one as well. And she kind of had like stretchy limbs going on, which is uh, kind of what we see with this new cyborg version of Amy with a few additions here and there. We also got the, the Nine Tails reference with uh, the cyborg universe version of Tails creating more mechanical tails to attach to his two tails. That's a fun idea. I like that. Uh, you know, you would be scared that maybe it would look too cluttered with all the tails, but they make it work. 
Granted, you know, some universes are better than others. I wasn't a huge fan of the whole primal universe storyline. That was kind of... Yeah, it's just, just the conclusion to it was pretty dumb. But I was really surprised, writing-wise at least, how nice the pacing felt for Sonic Prime. Like, it felt genuinely like stuff was always happening, and there were never scenes where it felt too dragged out or too boring. There were never scenes where it felt like not enough was explained at a time and it's going too fast for you. I was just thinking to myself, man, that's, that's very new for a Sonic cartoon. I think throughout time, a lot of Star Sonic cartoons out there just have this problem of going either too fast or too slow. Like, Sat AM Sonic, Sonic X, for me, those went way too slow, even though they were, like, fairly interesting ideas they were throwing out there, and fairly good, they're still just, like, just a bitch to watch. For me, personally. Just, like, really gotta focus on what's going on and not fall asleep. And then there's other cartoons like Sonic Boom, where there's just like all the effort gets put into the comedy, but there's no interest in making a steady storyline. It's just joke after joke after joke, and it moves very quick, and before you know it, the episode's over. The Sonic Prime has the best pacing I've ever seen in any Sonic cartoon, where it feels like it's going at the right speed. But that is a unique trait, and it's something that I have to commend them for doing, because no one else has figured out how to do that. Uh, another thing people are mentioning about the Sonic cartoon is, yes, there are different voice actors, a bunch of different voice actors. Uh, this isn't out of any malice towards the original voice actors or any, you know, we gotta rebrand it for the new kids, anything like that, no. It's actually because the production was in Canada, from what I understand, and Canada has very strict union laws that prevent them from hiring anyone who is not a Canadian citizen. You know, honestly, I wasn't too warmed up to some of the voices at first, but after a while, it's, it's not that bad. It's really not that bad. Different people, I hear, complain about different characters not really sounding quite right. When the first, like, teaser came out and I heard the new Sonic voice, I was like, ah, <laughs> that sounds a little bit, just a little bit too deep for a Sonic voice. And another thing is, you can tell that the, the voice actor is doing a Sonic voice. It doesn't sound very natural. Um, and then there's Shadow, I guess. Shadow's not doing his super edgy boy voice, it kind of sounds a little bit more grounded. But, you know, once you get past that, it's not, it's not too bad. You know, once you kind of settle in, for the most part, the voice acting is fine. You, you can tell that they're not as familiar with the characters as the other voice actors would be, having played them for so long. But it's not too distracting. It doesn't pull you away from the, the cartoon itself. There is one redesign of a Sonic character, but it is an iconic design that they swapped out for specifically this Sonic cartoon, and that is Rouge the Bat. She's not wearing her iconic um, shoulderless heart onesie or whatever it's supposed to be. They kind of swapped it out for more of a, a full-on leather suit going on there. It's still tight to the skin, so I mean, it is kind of funny to me that when even four kids didn't change her outfit, that Netflix would want that changed. <laughs> I don't really care that much. I think her new outfit looks kind of good, honestly. I think it looks it looks fine. It's maybe you could argue it's a little bit too detailed and it doesn't fit the Sonic style, which would be fair. I discussed it in like my Lola Bunny video, which I'm sure a lot of people hated, but whatever. Uh, I didn't mind them not doing the mid-drift for Lola Bunny in the new Space Jam. My issue with it was just that they made her completely flat and without any feminine features whatsoever. That was bothersome to me because it kind of 
Well, from a design perspective, it's garbage, right? Because you should be able to tell if a character's a female or not. And uh, from a social perspective, it's just distasteful because it goes to show that you don't value femininity and all that other all that other stuff that goes with it. They didn't do that for Rouge the Bat, though. They just switched her outfit up, but she still got knockers on her. <laughs> And you kind of see the outline of said knockers continuously as, of course, they do go through multiple universes and basically all the characters switch outfits every time they go to a new universe. So it's not really out of place that she's the, the one that got a redesign in the main universe, the Sonic Prime universe, so to say. I, I can see some people getting bummed out just because they're not seeing Rouge in her classic design. And I get it. I do. I just didn't care as much as everyone else would. Uh, going back to the animation, I actually... I warmed up to the animation fairly quickly, especially when we got to some fight scenes for this show. The fight scenes are killer, and I feel like that's very important and very good. You know, that was one thing that I I held Sonic 2 uh, to be commendable, that movie, is that the fight scenes were very good. Uh, Sonic fight scenes should be very good, because that's part of the pull. That's part of what Sonic fans really want from a Sonic cartoon, is really sick fight scenes. And maybe, to some extent, you could argue that some of the things that they got away with doing in the Sonic cartoon, they wouldn't be able to do in 2D, at the very least with this budget that they were working with. So maybe it's a good thing that they did choose the 3D art style over the 2D? Who knows? All I know is that I did enjoy it, and this is coming from a person who normally very much prefers 2D over 3D art. Writing is pretty solid. It is very reminiscent of the uh, IDW Sonic comics, which is not too surprising since they got people from the Sonic comics to be consultants on this show. If you don't like or are not familiar with those comic books, maybe you won't maybe you won't like the show as much. One thing I can say that I definitely don't like about Sonic Crime is that they decided to split up the seasons short. And I do, I get why they did it, right? It's the year of Sonic. You gotta have Sonic Crime come out this year. Alongside the Sonic movie and Sonic Frontiers, this is the year to capitalize on that new Sonic cartoon and throw it out there. But eight episodes for one season? It's just so odd. I don't really like it. I guess they did leave it at a decent enough cliffhanger so that you'll be very excited when season two comes out. I will say, as far as being a Netflix cartoon, normally I don't like Netflix originals. Just just how it is normally. I think that they're all kind of garbaggio or amateur at best. And I wouldn't normally recommend anything from Netflix. Obviously Christmas season, I'd recommend Klaus. And yeah, this is one of the rare occasions where something new, something comes out of Netflix, and I actually think it's pretty good, and I would recommend people to check it out. Sonic Crime is one of those things, alongside Klaus. You should check out those two things from the Netflix originals. Funny part is I was actually watching this... I was trying to watch it before, like, Adam woke up, because he doesn't really like Sonic, and I don't want to bother him with it. But he, he did wake up, he came downstairs, and he was actually okay with it being on in the background. I don't know if that's much of an endorsement, but he actually turned around and started watching it at one point. And he said, wow, it's so weird that this show came from Netflix, and it's normal. And there's nothing really wrong with it. It's like, okay, it's like, not bad. So that's, you know, that's surprising just hearing from Adam's mouth, someone who's not very much not a Sonic fan, to be like, hey, this isn't, this isn't that bad. This isn't that bad of a show. So there, there's the, there's the indirect endorsement from Adam saying that it's, it's not that bad as I was watching it being a, all sonic out and autistic. Uh, I'll just wrap up this review here and end it by saying, yeah, it's the year of Sonic. There's a lot of good Sonic stuff coming out. And this is probably one of the best, in my opinions. Grant granted, it's only eight episodes in. It could go downhill from here. Who knows? 
<laughs> and it's not by any means perfect. There's definitely some critiques you can throw out there for, for the Sonic Prime. But as it is, as it stands right now, I think it's pretty solid. I think it's pretty good. And I would, in fact, recommend it. So that's all I got to say on that matter. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Merry Christmas, of course. And I'll see you guys next time. Program restart. Shutting down all systems.